iron in the soul. So I got this email on the 2nd of October. So today's the 7th. I spent about four or five days really thinking about a solid answer to this email. And I believe it's for this individual man, but it's for thousands of people. And so when you hear this email, think about your own personal experience and what you're trying to accomplish right now. Let's read the direct message. He said, what's up? I am a student athlete that recently transferred to a big school to pursue my career in the NFL. I have three years of NCAA eligibility left. I believe I am the one, right? I'm, I'm the one. We're going to we'll touch on that. To break my family's various curses. Okay? And I have done a lot of self-work to make sure I see it through. I am writing to see if you can touch on the ability to break curses while achieving generational success in an upcoming video god bless well brother you you're in luck i have again spent four or five days thinking about this i have some notes i can't prepare for this one and before you tune this video out you say you know what i'm not trying to get to the nfl are you trying to build a business are you trying to escape generational poverty are you trying to be that first doctor in the family that first lawyer in the family in fact one of my subscribers he is a lawyer now. And I remember just a year or two ago, he, I don't think he minds me sharing this. Like anybody else, he was, you know, struggling through through law school, as I can imagine would be very difficult. And we talked a few times in private and he, he, he took care of the business. He got it done. And he's out there now. He's rolling. He's, he's running a thousand miles an hour, getting it done. So I, I know what it takes to cross over into new territory advancement, prosperity. So we're going to talk about today for all of you people who see this video. This is for all of you athletes, all of you influencers, models, business people, those who want to escape the trap that you have seen your family fall into over and over and over again. Today's video is for you. So before you think, you know what, I'm not trying to get to the NFL. This is not for me. No, no, no. This is for you. Trust me, this is for you. If you're trying to build generational wealth and break curses and create um, a generational blessings, because I do believe there is too much, and this is my opinion now, too much of an emphasis on generational curses and very little talk on generational blessings. We need to talk about that. Generational blessings is a thing. Okay, we're not just going to talk about how bad everything was. There are people who are chosen by the most high to start over with okay he you're different and so let's talk about this today and what you can do so as we begin this talk we are talking about three things in as a foundation or as a premise for this talk if we're trying to break curses and to build generational wealth as a base for this and i got multiple layers we're gonna do some work today i got my full associates this is gonna be going by in this video you need a cup of coffee for this one. We're going to talk for a while. So be prepared. I'm going to give you a fair warning for about a 20, 30 minute video. This is going to be a long talk because I want to really help a lot of people today. So really soak this up and put this into practice. So we're talking about three things off top. Number one, we're talking about thinking like a leader. Number two, we're talking about occupying new rooms. And thirdly, we're speaking about your relationship to your superiors. So if you're trying to build wealth, transition into a new task bracket escape curses from your family we're talking about thinking or your mindset we're discussing your uh, ability to go into new rooms okay networking meet new people you're not gonna do it by yourself especially if you get into the nfl and number three of course your relationship with your superiors your coaches the bosses that's just the way that game goes so let's do some work you asked me the question so i'm gonna give you what i know i can't give you what someone else knows but this is what big bro did before I did much of anything, I spent multiple years learning first. Everything begins with the mindset. Before I began to teach other people publicly, um, in my case, uh, and this is not an exaggeration, I studied from the age of 20 till about 26 before I really began to publicly teach people. 
and before I felt worthy of the type of responsibility. And so your big bros will tell you the truth. Every, I'm my, the way I live my life, I can't speak for anybody else. But me personally, I spent multiple years first working on self, getting my mind right. So if we're talking about getting into the NFL, the NBA, if we're talking about creating a business, whatever it is you're trying to do, per, if you're trying to be this big um, you know, fitness influencer, whoever you may be, I believe it begins with your mindset, thinking like a leader, thinking like whatever it needs to be to be in this particular league or this particular lane. So it begins with reflection, thinking, reading, and learning. That's the foundation before we can get to any other details in this talk. So this means to learn as much as you can about your craft, to study it all. Learn from the greats. You're talking about the NFL. There are thousands of men who have made it. So they have a lot of real life experience, just a wealth of knowledge just right there before your fingertips. Utilize YouTube, utilize books, classes, um, learn from the greats. And again, this is not just about football. This is about business. This is about music. This is about ministry. Whatever lane you're trying to get into, chosen ones, there are people who have done it successfully. And if we are smart, we have to learn from these people. We don't have all the answers. Okay. So, you know, I think it's important that we really spend, and this requires focus, right? This requires removing all vices and and this is how i have noticed in my life in my family's life this is what hinders a lot of our mothers a lot of our fathers our cousins older uncles and aunties and this is not a judgment against our families but the reason that some of them didn't achieve their dreams or goals and, and one of them, there's many reasons for this, and I understand that. And this is not to say this is everybody's fault. But one big one is, is they allow their vices to be a hindrance to their growth and to their development. So if we are trying to advance, we have to remove all vices. So you say, big bro, are you leading by example? Yes, I lead by example. I made a decision at 19 years of age to give up alcohol, smoking weed, um, fornication, all those things. I have not been with another woman since I was 19 with the exception of my wife. Facts. This is some people say you're arrogant. I'm not arrogant. I, I know who I am. I have something called dignity, respect, self-respect. I know it bothers some of y'all about me, but I have dignity, respect, loyalty. See, some people just try to marginalize it to arrogance because you don't like the authority comes with that. Authority, power, dignity, respect, character class comes from a lifestyle i made a conscious decision as a 19 year old young man i'm done with all this stuff you dig so if we're going to prosper if we're going to make some money if we're going to advance get to the nfl get to the nba build this business become this influence become a model become you know a lawyer whatever it is you decide to do that's going to help you to really be successful in life my advice is your big brothers do what i did lay those vices to the side those become weights on your journey. And if you're struggling right now, this is not a judgment. I'm telling you by example. That's, to me, that's what leadership is. Leadership is what you do. Not just what you say out your mouth. It's what you do. And so I made a conscious decision to lay aside those weights. And, and that has helped me to clarify my thinking. That helped me to build connections. Because, you know, when we can lay aside the weights and the vices, we're better situated to live in the present and we understand the importance of opportunity we understand the importance of a moment our lives can change drastically in a moment one bad decision and you are in prison for the rest of your life one good connection and you are on forever you, those of you who do music one song you're gone forever if you, <laughs> problem is getting that one but if you get that one you're gone you know, you get that one song, that one video. Sometimes what we, people, the content creators who may be listening to me, you get that one video, you're gone. And, and, the, and the fire gets, gets, and the wheel gets suspended. And so we are working each day. We're conscious. We're disciplined. We're laying aside weights because we understand how important one moment is. And that's good or bad. So what am I saying? Since you have this three-year window, and for those who listen to this, if you're honest with yourself, some of the goals you want to accomplish, you understand, okay, to do this, 
I have about a three to five year window. Another honest moment from your big brother. I have some goals in my life. I got goals. I have dreams. And I have already processed in my mind the certain goal I have right now. I have about a three to five year window to do this. And if I don't, this goal will never happen. Doesn't mean my life's going to end in three years. <laughs> okay. But this goal, there's a small window of opportunity. So you're asking the right person, brother. When, when you understand this is what I want, this is the small window, what do I do? So you're asking me what I've been asking myself. So we're really helping each other out this video right now. This is me, have, this is my, your big brother talking to my audience and helping you also help myself. So I'm telling you what I'm telling myself. You have to be razor sharp focused at this point. Understand the importance of opportunity. Look for opportunities. It won't find you. Be humble enough to receive from the right people. You will miss. I look back on my life. So many doors open in my life by being decent with people, by being humble, by being respectful. I'm not saying being insecure. But, but by being respectful, when you're respectful and humble, people want to deal with you. If you come across as arrogant and people can't talk to you, especially talking about the NFL, I already know how that's coming. You got coaches, you got bosses, you got teammates. So you got to have your mind right. And, and that's why I say it begins with a mindset. You know what I mean? You could be around guys who, who are on that. <laughs> these ain't bums. These, these are the best of the best in the world. You dig? And so they're ready. And so they're focused so you can learn from these guys. And so when you have that right mindset, this will help you get along with your teammates. For those who don't play sports, this will help you get along with your coworkers. And if you got your own business, those who work under you. All of this is so important in our journey of escaping the curses that really hindered, not necessarily destroyed, but really hindered a lot of people that we love. And so if you're a person like me that reflects, and I know a lot of you do, a lot of you journal, you reflect, you think deep about your life. Otherwise, you wouldn't even watch videos like this. You look at your family and, and, you, and not, not to be judgmental, but for your own personal growth. You look at, okay, what mistakes, this is me, I speak for myself now. What mistakes did my uncles make? What mistakes did my fathers make? What did they do well? What did they not do well? For you ladies who hear this talk, look at your mama, look at mama. Look at TT. <laughs> Look at grandma. What did grandma, auntie, and mama do well? And what did they not do right? Okay, look at our family. Every, let's be honest. Everything they did, they did was not wrong. I know from my family, one thing I got from them, my family, they were hard workers. I, I'm going to take that to the grave with me. My family put that in me. My grandfather, he got up and he worked all day. He was uh, um, general, respectfully. Granddad was, was a G. He worked at the same job 30 years back in the 60s when it was worth it. He can't do that now. This is 2023. <laughs> okay. But back in the 60s, granddad had a good, he had one of those jobs in a um, steel mill, making bread, taking care of six kids. Granddad, six, six, 300 pounds, he up every day. He's hit 10 hour shifts, making those steel, grinding. And so that that's implanted in me. I have people depending on me. I got to get up and grind every day. I don't care how I feel. And so that's the mindset we have to have if we want to succeed for all of us who listen to this video. So why do I say all that? There's some good your family can teach you. That's just one example from my life. And I'm sure you all can think of a, a lot from your own life. What did your family do well? Okay. And what did they not do so well? And that can help you to go forward. So I, learned, I mentioned something good that my family did. One of the vices I learned from my family, a lot of them have problems with women. You know what I mean? And I'm not going to be personal, but a lot of them stepped out of their marriages. They had the side women. They did all that stuff. And I said to myself, I'm not going down that path. And by grace of God, I haven't. And I pray that I'll keep it that way for the rest of my life. You know, so I made a decision that I'm not going to do that. Does it make me better than them? No, it doesn't. But where I'm trying to go, I don't need that energy around me. You feel me? I have a woman who loves me, who supports me. I'm going to keep that right where it's at. You dig. And so you learn the good from your family. And you take from that, and then the bad, you reject that. This is how you escape some of the curses and to build that generational blessing. So the second part of that, I said, first of all, you know, it begins with your mindset. And then secondly, entering those new rooms. So in your case, with sports, you know, that college level, it's gonna, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be a different level. And you know that already. But I'm going to tell you what you already know. All these guys think just like you're thinking. They want to get in the league too. <laughs> you feel me? They got goals. They got ambition. 
You know what I mean? They're grinding. They're watching those videos you watch. They, they're inspired. They're in the gym. They take their creatine, their protein. They're drinking their water. I know how it is with football. I played football high school. You're drinking your water. You're, you're in the weight room. They, they get into it like you get into it. That's how they got there. <laughs> so you're talking about NCAA. This ain't Division II. You, you, these are the best young men in the country. So they, they coming ready. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're coming. They're coming for you. And so you got to come with that same energy. And so going into this new room, and this is for your business people too. Hey, listen, all of us who want to get to the bag, there's a bunch of people who feel the same way you feel. So this what this be rap or sports or business or doctors, lawyers. There's a lot of people right there just as hungry as you are. So the question we have to ask ourselves is a question I ask myself, how do I distinguish myself? And that's going to be hard. Now, and in this case, I can't tell you. That's something you got to figure out. You got to figure out what's going to, what's going to separate me from everybody else. And, and that's the challenge that we have because we live in a day now where everybody wants to do what you're doing. You want to play sports? Everybody want to play sports. You want to rap? Everybody want to rap. You want to start a business? Everybody want to be a business person now. You want to do YouTube? Everybody want to do YouTube now. Everybody wants to do Instagram. Everybody wants to do modeling. Whatever you're doing, everyone else wants to do it too. So you have to find a way. And I saw this yesterday, to be honest, on Instagram. It was a post from a fitness influencer I follow, Dream World. I, I recommend him. He, he's one of the best guys online with this. And he's a perfect example of, this, of what happens. Dream World, in my opinion, he figured out what we need to figure out in our own lane. Listen to this. This is this is a jewel for you. I'm dropping this nugget for you. Dream World lifts weights like any other fitness influencer. But what he does is he lifts weights. He'll have 400 pounds. He'll bench press it. And then he'll do a sit-up with the 400 pounds. <laughs> Ain't nobody coming like that. <laughs> Imagine doing a sit-up with 400 pounds like The Undertaker. So he found out a way to distinguish himself. He, it means he got that much stronger than everybody else. I'm going to tell you, I've been lifting weights for years. You're not sitting up with no 400 pounds, my boy. Guys ain't coming like that. And so, what am I saying? Why do I say that? He found a way to distinguish himself within a flooded industry. Because everybody want to do fitness now. And so, what you're trying to do, like Dream World, you're going to have to find a way to create your own path in that, that packed lane. Or else get left behind. And, and that's the advice I give to any of us who want to break the curse and to build the generational wealth to get that blessing. So you're going to have to really dig deep. And this is going to require focus. This is going to require setting concrete goals. So it can't just be kind of just in a year. What am I going to do in the next year? Planning your day out. You're going to have to be focused. Study the greats. So finding a way to distinguish yourself in a uh, saturated saturated culture or industry, which pretty much everything is saturated right now because everybody wants to do everything. How do you set yourself apart? And that's going to come through hard work. That's going to come through focus. Um, I would say to add to this, uh, as someone who is playing sports, of course, that what comes with that is a lot of female attraction. So if you're good enough to get to the NFL... I would, if, if, if at all possible, this is some advice now, this is personal. If you could find a woman now who really loves you for who you are, prior to you getting that money, that would be one of the best things for you. You know, you don't want somebody that's with you just because you're in the NFL now. And so if you can find love right now, I would hope that for you. I would be happy if you, let's say three years now you're in the NFL. If you could find someone right now who really believes in your goal, who believes in your vision, that would be good for you. As opposed to somebody who just comes along when you did all the work and now they want that bag you got. You know, so keep that in mind too. That's just a side point to this message. I will say to add to this, you must prioritize your rest, recovery, and peace. This is what your big bro is doing right now. I'm going to prioritize my peace. I don't have to respond to everybody. I don't have to explain everything. I'm going to focus on keeping my mind pure. Because your thoughts are power. And so when you're constantly flooding your mind with negativity, doubt, haters, envy, jealousy, this will be a hindrance to your path. And so prioritize your rest and your peace because what you are attempting to do is to lift a very heavy weight. Not necessarily a physical weight, but to do something this big that's heavy. That's going to be hard. So if I know anything about lifting heavy weights... It's, you're going to have to recover to do that. You're not going to get a PR tired, 
not rested, and, and not focused mentally because weights are just as much uh, mental as it is physical. We're talking about physical weights. Now, I'm going back between both analogies, between the physical and the spiritual, and I'm using the physical to teach the spiritual. So just as you need rest, recovery, mental toughness to lift heavy weights, you go to the gym, you say, today, I'm going to clear four wheels, four or five, bang. To clear four or five, you're going to need to be rested. You have to be mentally there. You can't be thinking about, you know, what's going on in the house. You got to be you under that bar right now. And so if you need that type of focus and physical rest and recovery to press 405 pounds on a bench press, this is the same analogy in the spirit to get into the NFL, to build generational wealth for those who hear this message, for those of you who want to do business, modeling, influences, for all you people who have big dreams, understand you're lifting a heavy weight. So look at what a weightlifter does to really hit those PRs, those personal records, and draw the same analogy in the spirit. So what am I trying to say? If you need rest to lift physical weights, what is your rest in the spiritual? You need to meditate. You need to focus. You need to pray. What is your recovery? Your recovery may be going on vacation. Your recovery may be spending some time watching a movie that you like. Do things that are enjoyable. Everything is not spiritual. It's okay to laugh at jokes. Okay, that's part of your recovery. Laughter does good like medicine, according to the word of God. So it's okay to do all those things. It's okay to have a life. It's okay to date. Okay, we're not just living serious all the time. You can go on dates. You can have a regular life. There's nothing wrong with that. So find time to have a life while pursuing your goals you don't have to just be serious all the time because you you break so there there is a give and take so i know i say to study to focus to work hard avoid distractions but at the same time you don't want to just to not live your life for three years i hope that makes sense okay while you're pursuing your goals live life enjoy your life that that's a command from god we're commanded to enjoy our lives okay so don't make it all business and no pleasure two extremes is to make everything pleasure and other thing is all business and, and both can be extremes. And so the, the challenge for us, the men and women who listen to this talk, if we want to be successful, we have to learn how to balance those two out. There's a time for pleasure and there's no wrong with that. And there's a time for a business. And, and that's the wisdom we need to build generational wealth. So we talked about getting the mindset right. Number two, we talked about occupying new rooms, which speaks of connections. For all you people who are afraid of connections, you're afraid of their wealth. The connections which leads to the third part of that, and that is your relationship with your superiors. Here is where a lot of people drop the ball. They are not humble enough to realize there are people who are superior to them and what they're trying to do. So I don't care who you are. If you are an athlete, if you are an entertainer, if you are a businessman, a lawyer, a doctor, a tradesman, you're a home builder. A lot of guys, you know, guys, there's a lot of money in, in, in home building. Okay. Contractors, you know, guys who do that type of work, skilled laborers. There's some, there's some bread there. Okay, everything ain't ain't white collar. Some, there's some blue collar bread out there. You dig? So if you're a blue collar guy, you know what I mean. Whoever you are listening to this, there are people in all these rooms who are superior to you. That's just the way that goes. And I have always understood that. And, and I think back in my life, I have always, to be honest, gotten along with leadership. Because I've always understood the concept. This is the boss. This is how this works. And this is why in most cases, wherever I went, I was often second in command. Because I understood that concept. The, of Someone has to run the show. And that's fine. So when you have people who are your superiors, in this case, it's going to be the coaches. It's going to be the players who've been here for a while. You're a rookie. This guy's been here 15 years. You learn something from this guy. Okay? You know, so a lot of us, we hinder ourselves by not learning from those who have earned respect. It's one thing to demand respect, but when people have earned it through their real life experience, they got it done. We will be foolish to not learn from that. And so I, I tell you, I learned that stuff in my life. We're talking from the streets in Chicago. I knew that when I was in the streets. I knew that once I got into the ministry, business world, and even now with YouTube, being online, content creation, I've always understood there's somebody who's doing this better than me. And I would be a fool to not learn from them. And so if we're going to build generational wealth, we have to remain students. I call myself Big Bro because I'm Big Bro on this platform, but Big Bro is still a student. Big Bro is still a learner. Okay, I understand that. And I'm smart enough to know if I go into a room where these people have been doing this for a while, I'm going to learn. I'm not going there like I'm a know-it-all. Okay, so we have to be committed to being 
lifetime learners. That's how you get smart. You learn from those. And you're smart enough to realize, okay, this person, what are you talking about? <laughs> okay, let me get something from that. Let me learn. Let me glean that information. And that's how we um, continue to build up our mental capacities to really position ourselves in these new rooms and in these new environments. So that is a long way of saying this is how you're going to do it. Your mindset, going into those new rooms, and how you carry yourself with superiors. I'm going to help you out. I'm going to actually read my 15-point outline for you. So here's for those who listen this far. I say, big bro, we still with you, big bro. Study your craft. Avoid all vices. Stay humble. Understand a job is only meant to be worked for a few years while building your business on the side. So if you got some jobs, that's, that's, that's part of the process. We're not, we're not working jobs for 30 years. That's part of the process. Set concrete goals for one year. Build some connections. Don't stay isolated your whole life. I don't care what none of y'all say. Build some connections. Learn from the mistakes of your family and also learn from what they did well. Be prepared. I, I forgot this in the point. I'm glad I read this. I forgot this point in the message. Be prepared for moments of dark depression. Man, I forgot that's, a, that's important. Let me park right there for a second. It's going to get dark before it gets bright. I'm glad I read this. It's going to get dark before it gets bright. So be prepared for times of darkness, doubt, discouragement, depression. It's going to get heavy. You try to get to the NFL, you're trying to lift a heavy weight. You're trying to become the first millionaire in your family, that's a heavy weight. You're trying to get to that six figures lane, that's a heavy weight. It's going to get dark. And so be prepared for that. Realize that some goals you have a only a one to four year window. And that's what you're saying. You got a one, you got three years to get this done. You know? And so that requires all we talked about. I won't repeat myself. You are lifting a heavy, heavy weight in the spirit. Just as you lift heavy weights in the natural to accomplish this, you are lifting a heavy weight. So learn from weightlifters and then draw parallels in the supernatural as well as the physical. Prioritize. Rest recovery and your peace i skipped this one too stop telling people your business keep some stuff to yourself outside energy becomes a distraction at times number 14 learn to grow where you are planted think of joseph from the bible joseph grew while he was in prison and he also grew while he was in the palace joseph grew while he was in prison and he also grew while he was in the palace and 15, I'll touch on this one. Take it one day at a time. That's basically a way of saying, understand the importance of the moment. This is what I'm doing right now. And opportunities, moments can change for the better very quickly and also for the worse. And so we have to not allow a, such a big goal to overwhelm us. We have to break it down to small goals, which is day by day. What am I going to do today? And that can be helpful. So, I hope that helps. This is your big brother, King Jabez. Thanks for listening. God bless. You know what time it is out here. Peace.